we want to understand precession. And that is, when I'm holding a wheel on one side and not on the other, it falls. That is the torque of gravity from the force of gravity downward and the tension of the string upward. The torque of gravity into the board rotates the wheel into the board. But when the wheel is spinning, the torque of gravity produces a change in angular momentum that adds to the angular momentum the wheel already has to rotate the axis of rotation into the board. The central concept to understand precession is that the torque that you apply to something is equal to the rate of change of the angular momentum it has. Where angular momentum, we remember, is equal to, just like momentum is equal to mb, and it's a vector, angular momentum is i times omega, and it's a vector. And so when you apply a torque to something, you give it a change of angular momentum, which is equal to torque times the amount of time you're applying that torque. But before we do that, let's look at why this should make sense and look at the linear analog, because it's more intuitive to us. We know that force is equal to the rate of change of linear momentum. Okay, and that is, is if I'm sitting here, a mass m naught, and you apply a force to me, you're going to give me an impulse, and that impulse is equal to the force times delta t, right? So you give me some impulse, delta p, in this direction. Okay, so if you push me in this direction, boom, I move in that direction. And so my velocity will be in that direction. You'll see me move in that direction. However, if I'm already moving with some speed, then I have some initial momentum in this direction. And you give me that push, you know what will happen is I won't just go in this direction. No, I'll go off at an angle. And so this delta p will be added to this initial p. And the final momentum will be in that direction. And the larger the initial momentum, the less the change of direction. Surely, if there's a large meteor moving very fast through space, it has a lot of momentum, and you push on it, you will change its direction very little. I mean, you might still be applying the same force for the same time and give it the same delta p, but if it has a huge initial momentum, the final momentum will deviate in direction from the initial momentum by a very little bit. So what does this have to do with precession? And let's take a look at our wheel again. If I were to push on this wheel in this direction, that applies an upward force on this portion of the wheel. And so the impulse I give this portion of the wheel, delta p, is going to be upward. And you see it happen. I push on the axle, and that section of the wheel gets some delta p upward. Now, what if the wheel is already moving? Then it has some initial momentum in this direction. And when I give it that impulse upward, it's not going to go upward. It's going to change direction to be like that. And so when I push like this, if the wheel is already spinning, it's not going to turn like this. It's going to go like this. Well, let's see if we can see that. As I push inward, as I push inward on the wheel, we see the wheel tip this way. And that again is because we have initial momentum in this direction, and I add an impulse in that direction, it tips, it changes its direction that way. And likewise here, 
it gets an impulse downward, but it's moving this way, it changes its direction to be more downward. So now let's take a look at this with angular notation. I have a wheel, and I push in this direction. And so what that is, is if this is radius and that's the force, I'm applying a torque in this direction. And so therefore, I'm giving it an angular impulse, delta L, in that direction. And so you see, if the wheel is not moving, and I give it that angular impulse, it has angular momentum in this direction. But what if it's already spinning? Okay, so it's moving in this direction. It's spinning in this direction upward, so it has some initial angular momentum, L0. And so what happens with that angular impulse when I apply a torque in this direction? Well, that change of angular momentum is added to this angular momentum that we already have. And so the new angular momentum is in this direction. And so it seems kind of strange because, because I push on the wheel like this, but it turns like this. And the larger the initial angular momentum, the less this little change changes its direction. So if it's not spinning very fast, I can get it to change its direction pretty easy. But if it's spinning really fast, it's more solid, it's more robust. And so how does precession work? When I hold this string up and gravity pulls down on the wheel, it applies a torque in this direction, into the board. So that torque gives it an angular impulse with some angular momentum into the board. And we see that happen. The torque of gravity results in angular momentum into the board. But if we already have angular momentum, and the angular momentum is in that direction, this angular impulse is added to that angular momentum and moves the vector in this direction. And so we see the angular momentum vector get pushed around in a circle by that small amount of angular momentum provided by the torque of gravity constantly. And what we see is if we start with more angular momentum, that little angular momentum addition moves it slowly. But as the angular momentum of the wheel drops off through friction, that same amount of torque provides that same impulse every second, and it makes a bigger change. Watch. We start with a lot of angular momentum, and so the precession rate is pretty slow. Three, four, five, six seconds. Right? And as we slow it down, we see the precession rate increase to three seconds. We slow it down, and it processes much faster. So again, what this is all about is torque, is the rate of change of angular momentum. And so you get an angular impulse, a small amount of additional angular momentum, which is torque times delta t. Gravity provides that torque. Momentum, an angular momentum, is a vector. You need to add those vectors nose to tail. So if you start with some angular momentum already, that little additional impulse has to be added. And that constant addition of angular impulses from the torque of gravity is what precession is.